All right, let's get started. Today we have the McAllen 12 year double cask. Um, definitely excited about this one. McAllen is obviously a great name. They've been around since uh, 1824. Um, we're actually gonna talk a little bit about barrels today and just how much, um, how much impact they actually have on the whiskey. If you don't know much about it already, I didn't know much about it, but obviously decided to learn it so I can share my knowledge with you guys uh, while we do a nice little tasting. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about barrels uh, this time is because the, this is a double cask. So it's aged in sherry, um, American oak, and European oak casks. Um, this uh, whiskey, uh, uh, obviously because of the good name as well has no additives so actually um in uh so a little bit about the the cask of course um so irish whiskey can be um aged in any wood by law doesn't matter in uh, a scotch whiskey in order for it by law to be named scotch it has to be aged in european or american oak casks um and with um bourbon whiskey it must be, uh, oh, it must be aged in new oak casks. So every single barrel they use has to be brand new. And that's another interesting part about it. I'll, I'll get to that. But um, what do they do with all those leftover barrels? Well, of course, uh, the Scotch, um, the Scotch uh, distillers love that because new oak barrels um, that they use for the Scotch whiskey lack depth and character. So for actually using a, a barrel, um, an American barrel that was just aged for, you know, three years, five years, eight years, whatever, it has all that depth and character that they can add to their Scotch whiskey. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, this is a Highland single malt, of course, 12 year, as I said, it's going to be uh, a lot of sherry in this, which is always nice. Definitely. Let's give her a pour. Um, it's actually, so I don't know if you knew this as well, but Speyside is actually a sub-region in Highland. So their location is in Speyside. However, they like to say that they're a Highland whiskey. Um, I, yeah, I'm learning this stuff every day. I, I didn't know that either. <laughs> I thought it was a, a separate reason if I'm separate region if I'm being completely honest. Um, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Jesus, um, I had a little. I might have had a whiskey before this, so. <laughs> Feeling good. Um, I want to also, you know, I want to stress to you guys that we're going to be hitting the learning stages, okay? We've done a lot of tastings at this point in time, seven or eight, maybe, yeah, maybe nine by now, seven or eight, something like that. Um, so I've been learning a lot more and I want to share my wisdom with you. Um, so, for example, uh, we're going to be talking about texture as well with the Macallan. Um, right now, you guys know how to smell, you know uh, the palate, and you know the finish. But we're going to be adding texture to this. So if you swirl it around in the glass and you look at the actual legs um, or the tears that they call it, that is coming down off of the glass, this is going to tell you the texture of the whiskey. Um, if it's thin, then it's going to be minimum texture, more like on the water-based side. Uh, if it's thick, it's gonna be creamy and velvety and full. Um, right now, these, I would say in comparison from what I've noticed, these legs look perfectly, um, uh, I wouldn't say they're, they're thin and I wouldn't say that they're thick, but, I, but they run very slowly. Um, it's nice. I know this color as well. Um, I don't know if I just mentioned the color, but so, in Scotland, you're not allowed to add, or sorry, in Scotland, you're allowed to add caramel coloring. It's called like EB140 or something. Oh man, Andrew, you talk too much. Yeah, this is a lesson. Go in for the smell, guys, while I just talk away, okay? And check it out. Um, but yeah, there's caramel coloring that they're allowed to add to stuff. Uh, and in, um, and I think in America, they're not allowed to. But because of the uh, because of the new casks, that that's why all bourbon has this rich mahogany color uh, because of th that very reason. Um, also, another fun fact: since I'm just talking away here, um, in order for something to be called uh, bourbon, it has to be at least 51% corn, 49% uh, grain, 
of anything else is totally fine. And for rye, same thing, it has to be at least 51% rye and 49% of whatever else you want. A little interesting fact for the day. Let's go in for the tasting before I talk your ears off and I got nothing left to speak about. Uh, okay, Whiskey Base gave this an 82.10 out of 1,200 votes. It's good, it's fine. Expecting a bit more for a Macallan, but... Okay, so you're gonna go in for some, um, some sherry. That smells really nice, actually. A bouquet of flavors there. Sherry, vanilla, fresh fruit, chocolate, honey, and citric. I definitely get caramel in there for sure. Mm, I do. I actually think I do get like um, like some yellow fruits in there, something like a like a sweet apple or like um, like a like a little lemony lemon twist. There's also something there I can't put my finger on. What is that? Mm, I think it's like, yeah, it's, it's milk, but it's like sweet milk, like honey milk. Like, yeah, milk, I think. <laughs> All right, going for the taste, guys. Mm. The percentage is 40%, by the way. This is not um, cask strength. I think that's lovely. I think that's totally fine. That's a good whiskey. Um, just to have normally, I wouldn't save it for a special occasion or anything like that. Um, it's not too complex for me. Even the back of the box says, um, deliciously honeyed, ginger, citrus, balanced with raisins and caramel. Um, I'm going to go in for another one. But that was uh, definitely good. You see what I mean about the texture now, right? The, the texture was really nice. It was creamy. Um, I, I would say there was almost like some buttered butter scotch there or some butterness that I got. I'm going to go in for another one. Mm. Yeah, the second one was much more, yeah, now that it opened up a little bit, my mouth got used to it. I'd say some caramel notes in there. I could I could see the raisin that they're talking about. There's definitely something that's, um, that's a bit sweet there, um, but definitely nice. It's, I would say it, it's, it's very, yeah, I, I like it. I, I think it's definitely good. And for you guys as well, you know, try and, if you can, try and remember this stuff. I mean, uh, of course, I, it's hard for me to memorize this stuff because I'm reading everything and I'm focusing on the camera and stuff. But for you, you know, um, it's good so that you can go into the future with like all the different Macallans that they have and you can kind of remember to yourself. Actually, one of the one of my clients even said that he wished he kind of had a cheat sheet. So I'm actually thinking about preparing this uh, the cheat sheet that I use and giving it to you guys so that you kind of have it in your file um, and then you can kind of go through it if you ever forget which whiskey you really liked or maybe I can just tell you the format of how I do it and you can make your own notes. I mean, that might be interesting as well. Um, I'm not going to do, you know what, I'm not actually going to do water with this one um, because it's only 40% and because um, I just don't think it needs it. Uh, but I am going to try it cold. Just a personal preference. Have fun with it yourself. Um, but what else did I want to talk about? So the, well, the finish, first of all, it says it's about a medium finish with, uh, yeah, which sounds about right with caramel, coffee, and some chocolate. So that makes sense. And this is going to go well with the pairing. We'll get something up nice here with the chocolate or, um, ooh, a room bolter. What is that? I wonder what treat that is, but it's Dutch. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Yeah, really hard to get a 
Really hard to get a scent now with the ice in there. Mmm, extremely caramel. Wow, 100% caramel. Yeah, even, or like the butterscotch, 100%. That's what it changes to when it's cold. That's nice. That's nice with the ice. Yeah, consider it. If you're, uh, if you have ice around you, I'd say pop it in there. That's definitely, that's good. Mm. The, it, it, it goes from a medium finish to a very short finish with the cold or with the ice, as you can imagine or, and probably assume. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's definitely delicious. I'm going to try this with a pairing, but actually another thing I wanted to mention with the barrels, well, what I've taught you so far. So, uh, when they started using bourbon casks, for scotch whiskey after uh, the Americans basically had to get rid of them. This kind of opened up the world to uh, scotch distillers starting to use um, all other spirit casks for everything. So that's when they started taking these wine casks and these PX casks. So I know that a Bordeaux cask, for example, um, if they aged the whiskey in there, it would give it a lot of um, red fruits uh, a lot of cherry and plum flavors that would go into it. You can imagine with the sherry casks, obviously that does the same thing. Um, and with the white barrel casks, such as um, a Sauternay, uh, a grape, this gave it notes of fresh bread, fresh lemon tart, and uh, creme caramel. So like a caramel custard dessert kind of stuff, which is, yeah, it's just so amazing that they've learned the science behind all this. Or, you know, they've learned to do this over the years and mix and match everything. But like each one takes, you know, 12 years to discover if it's going to be good. That just blows my mind, but really exciting, of course. Um, all right, let's get a chocolate guy here. Chocolate or a butterscotch. Do I have a butterscotch? I don't even know. I'm really curious what... I'm really curious. English cream toffee. I'm really curious what this room boater thing is. I've never seen it before. It's a Dutch candy. I don't know if some of you are Dutch and you've had it before and you're screaming at me right now. No, don't do it. It's terrible or <laughs> it's really good. Who knows? gonna try it yeah guys honestly that uh, that about wraps it up i think um honestly i think it's a good whiskey i actually really like it cold i really like it uh, room temp as well um i would give this a little bit stronger than an 82 if you ask me i would go like 82.5 83 i think it's um yeah it's it's nice to sip on but it also has uh different notes that you can that you it's got a bouquet of different things that you can put together um, but anyways, all right, guys, cheers, enjoy the rest.